Hello and welcome to Good Clean Gaming. I'm your host, Jolendo, and today we're playing a game called The Viceroy, by uh, published by and developed by Goatee Games. It has been released on Steam as of July 28, 2015, and is currently 10% off at $17.99. Um, this game is extremely deep. I'll read the, uh, the Steam store page description. Uh, real quick, you can tell how deep it is. It's a turn-based economic strategy sci-fi game. You will rebuild vast regions recently destroyed by disaster, crush rebel fleets, explore a large, far future tech tree, manage elaborately intertwined economies, respond to emerging events, and earn permanent skills to overcome escalating challenges. So this game is extremely deep, like crazy deep. And like I keep clicking through things, I'm like, there's another layer to this? There's another layer to this? <laughs> It's, it's kind of crazy how deep it goes now, how much you can... This is a serious micromanager's dream of game. So if you're into micromanaging stuff, oh yeah, you will love this. But um, let's get into the game. I'm not going to be able to show very deep into the game because, like I said, there's so much in the game. I'm only going to be able to scratch the surface here. And I'll try to do the best job I can with that. So let's get started. We'll go ahead and overwrite this one. It gives a nice welcome screen. In the Viceroy, you will rebuild a series of fallen areas called territories by researching technologies, constructing infrastructure projects, and curing lingering challenges. Your success at rebuilding of a territory is measured by its influence score. You can turn in each assigned territory at any time to convert the influence the territory gained under your leadership into skill points for your character. You can do this at your palace in the capital screen. If you succeed in earning a promotion, you will also increase your skill cap and the base size and difficulty of the ter territories you are assigned to rebuild. You can see what is required to earn a promotion by hovering over your faction symbol in the upper left-hand corner of the territory screen. The Viceroy is a complex game with lots of moving parts, and we've added lots of help. You will find many helpful hover overs uh, throughout the game's menus. Additionally, you can look up details on just about any topic in the university and the capital. The university can also be accessed with the question mark upper right corner of the screen. Lastly, there is a comprehensive game manual full of helpful screenshots that is freely available on the Viceroy Steam store page. We hope you enjoy Viceroy Go Tea Games. So, there are three dominant cultures within our region. The Commonwealth, the Panarchy, and the Empire of the Elect. You must declare your allegiance to the culture and subculture you most identify with. This will impact both your starting technologies and the culture character of your upper, middle, and lower classes. Okay, so the, the little voiceover tutorial parts in this game as we're going through, and they're, they're pretty helpful. Um, so basically we have three, oh, excuse me, six government types, I think is what we call these. Old Empire, Consensus Commonwealth, Panarchy Ritualists, Imperial Reformers, Commonwealth Unifiers, and Panarchy Informalists. And they each have a different social structure, a different starting technology set, and um, it affects the game in a number of ways. So for instance, the Old Empire here is basically the, I guess you could think of them as the standard. Uh, the Empire of the Elect is the oldest living civilization in the known galaxy. Those who consider themselves part of the Old Empire practice its ancient traditions despite its slow, uh, long and slow decline. So the Old Empire starts with imperialists who are plus industrial production as their upper class culture. Their middle class is plus cultural, and that's the Panarch. And their lower class is the plus biological, uh, which is Commonwealth. I don't want to throw too much at you at, at once, but basically this affects your game by basically making a hierarchy. Different government types have different hierarchies. And then there are rebel factions in the game. The lowest class culture of your um, government type tends to become the re rebel faction. So the rebels will be made up of Commonwealth people. Uh, though each one of these uh, types of people, the Imperialists, the Panarchs, and the Commonwealthians, uh, will have different ship preferences. So if you're up against the Commonwealth faction, you're probably going to be up against short-range weapons uh, and armor, whereas if you're fighting against the Imperialists, you're probably up against long-range weapons. They just have different preferences and such. Um, and then each one of these government types have different starting technologies. For instance, the Old Empire has Miniaturized Gate, Jaunting Grid, and Beyonder Retreat. And you see exactly what uh, those grant. Uh, I was kind of, I was looking through all these, and I kind of like the Imperial Reformers. The Empire of the Elect is all, um, as, it, it, as it was, is all but gone. Those who consider themselves Imperial Reformers try to breathe new life into its ancient customs and prepare the ground for its revival. So we're going to go with that one. 
And here's the nice little opening story. Empire Without End. You have struggled over such long millennia in the service of your convictions. How they have been mocked. The panarchy pays lip service to our righteous rule while laughing through their hands. We have noticed, we have seen, and despite their pride, despite their foolishness, you have been made viceroy. How could you not be? None can deny your greatness, your long history of success, and the legitimacy of your rule over those who cannot rule themselves. Through your works, through your deeds, through your words, you will lift high those who have fallen, those who have been trampled underfoot by the twisted goals of the panarchy. You will make them whole, you will make us whole. Lean upon the strong arm of the commonwealth and rely upon, most upon yourself. For it is through you that the empire will rise again, starting here, starting now, starting with those among us who are the least. For every one of us, from the highest panarch to the most wretched among the fallen territories, are imperial subjects. We do not deserve to have suffered like this. So far from the light of the empire, from true government, it is your duty and privilege to return the light of the empire to them through your personal sovereignty. So go forth, mighty Viceroy, and be the spark that rekindles the flame of our destiny in the name of the empire that was and will be again. So that's the opening for the uh, performers. This is the Commonwealth's regional administrative capital and headquarters of its many missions and bureaus. It is also the site of the Viceregal Palace, where you can return to discharge assignments and receive new territories. Neat. Um, so if we went to the university, we actually can see it's basically a encyclopedia for the game. The Commonwealth State University contains a wealth of knowledge about the infrastructures, challenges, and general concepts you will encounter during your vice regal career. And you see, you can click through all these things and see what they do. I presume that the yellow stuff is probably more important to read through and more basic, whereas the white um, text is more uh, granular, more specific. So you want to definitely read it through all the yellows if you want to understand everything there is in the game. And there, you can see from this list, there's a lot to this game. Uh, very, very in-depth. Uh, so let's exit there. We can go to the palace. The Vice Regal Palace is the physical seat of your authority and the principal location of your highest bureaus and functionaries. While between assignments, you may reassign influence gained from your viceregal successes to various bonuses tailored to your administrative style. So we can assign points to all these different things. For instance, administrator, it gets all the points that are unassigned and it gives a reduction in bureaucratic overhead. As you're doing turns, your bureaucratic overhead will increase and so it'll gradually make it harder and harder for you to govern. So the way you win this game is basically to turn around a district and get it working properly as quickly as possible before your bureaucratic overhead and the complexities of your government cause you to be basically overthrown or run out of money. So, um, and you see all the different bonuses on here if you're interested in viewing those. I'm just going to throw some into Industrialist because that's what the manual told me to do. And <laughs> I have, uh, I have uh, unfortunately, like I said, just scratched the surface of how this game works. So, still learning it quite a bit myself. So, we're going to jump into the portal here. And this will take us to our uh, assignment. This is the territory you have been assigned to rebuild. It contains systems which conduct trade between themselves and the Commonwealth Gate, portals to several neighbors, and the regional artifact. The people here need your oversight to guide them back to their former glory after the recent calamitous collapse. Should you succeed, their influence over Commonwealth politics will ensure you ever larger bureaucratic appropriations fail, and their misery will reduce your influence accordingly. Well, there you go. So each time I've loaded into this game, I've run a, I've run a couple test loads and tried out a bunch of things. Every single time I've loaded in, there've been, uh, been a different set of challenges, and it's surprising. It's like there, it's like it's just procedurally generated or randomly generated uh, challenges that are ready to go. So every time you load into the game, every assignment you get is going to be different, and it's going to be a new set of you know things to figure out and try to solve. So. This one is Challenge Fallen Imperial Pro uh, Province. You have been chosen to welcome a recently fallen Imperial Province into the Commonwealth. The Excuse me. Whew. Don't know 
know what that was. The challenges presented by this separation are varied, but crowding limits are lowered. Look for places to exploit the natur nature of local challenges. Nature. Okay. And maintain a flexible approach. So, um, and these are the challenges. You always start out, as far as I can tell, you always start out with nine challenges. You mouse over them to see a little details about it. I won't go through each one of them, but this one is brutal justice. This district employs brutal methods of justice that leave its people emotionally and often physically scarred. The brutality of this is uh, so senseless and small-minded that it provides no opportunity for response besides fear, hatred, and disgust hindering the efforts of cultural specialists. And you see at the bottom of the tooltip, you see how many districts. So you have a number of districts that you're ruling over. I think we have 50 here. And you see 24 of my 50 districts are um, stricken with brutal justice. And that reduces the cultural specialist multiplier by one. So that's an important thing to solve. And you see all these have different things on the tooltip. We're already 11 minutes into this game and we haven't even started playing. That tells you just the, the depth there is in this game. Uh, the bottom left hand corner there's events that have current uh, come up for instance there's new technologies available there's an objective list and there's procession of arts actually these aren't um, these are just like your startup thing so you once you do a next turn right here you'll have new things popping up on the bottom left hand corner uh, so you see the systems up here we have Forbes Nichols Trigillo and walls and let's just mouse around you mouse around your assignment to see what's around there's Walls, there's Nichols, there's Trigillo, and there's Forbes. Let's check out Forbes real quick. So if I click on the system, you got this funky looking planet. This is uh, one planet. of many systems under your control. It is comprised of several planets, each subdivided into administrative districts. Here you can review detailed information about the economic, foreign, and domestic affairs of this system and its component parts, examine existing and available infrastructure and consider the grave challenges left here by the recent collapse. Thank you, tutorial of voiceover. Um, so, on the left you can see this planet. It's basically a picture of a planet that's been subdivided. Uh, really, these are three planets. And so you got Forbes 1, Forbes 2, and Forbes 3 are all circling this star. So if I click on Forbes 1, it zooms in on Forbes 1, and I can choose district. It has four districts on Forbes 1. Forbes 1. If I click on District 1, it'll drill all the way down to District 1, and I can assign uh, that district specifically if I want to. I can click up here to back out, and be all the way back out at the system view. Um, so these numbers here, you see the productivity as well as the multipliers, and you see how many unspecialized production that you have. Unspecialized production means they just make uh, all three products evenly, but you see there's different modifiers on different districts and different planets. So if I drill all the way into Forbes District 1, the productivity of industrial is 2, biological is 2, and cultural is 3. So I, it would be best for me to make cultural, if I understand this right, cultural would be best over here. However, the industrial production uh, specialist modifier is times 3 for industrial. So I, I think that goes 2 times 3. I'm not sure how that exactly works. But I assume this would be 6, this would be 2, and this would be 3. So it would be best for me on this district, actually, to make industrial production. And I can just click and drag these guys down here if I really want to assign them uh, one by one. Or I can go up to a higher view and, and just assign them in bulk. So if I click on District 2, you'll notice those productivity numbers change, the multipliers change, all these things down here change. Uh, everything has different stuff on it, and it's kind of... It's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's a crazy amount of, of stuff. Uh, and then if I back out to the planet side, this is the full planet. I can assign a whole planet's worth of population um, over to industrial if I want to and ignore the you know granularity. Or I can go all the way up to the system level and say, I just want everybody on the whole, in every planet just working on industrial. I can do that. Um, so it just depends on how much you want to micromanage, whether or not you, how, how exactly you assign everyone. Uh, then you also have this, uh, apparently you have little bonuses up here as well, plus one to uh, industrial productivity, that's self-aware economy, so that's a protected, I guess that's a building, a, a project, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, domestic, uh, this gives you information about your domestic stuff, so uh, yeah, there's just so much in this game, I, I, I don't even understand uh, half of these screens sometimes. I still have to play more of it. There's there, Here's the foreign screen, you see information about the foreign stuff, again not exactly well versed in it um, and then that is the oh, excuse me that's the system screen 
So we have other screens up here. We have technology, policy, fleet, capital, and menu. Uh, let's start with technology. And this will show you the tech tree. Because theoretical science has long since outpaced technological implementation, the quantity of technological wonders a territory can sustain where science capacity is determined not by what is known to scientists, but by the widespread understanding of practical science among the people. Thank you, Tutorial VoiceOver. So in this view, you see the white lines show you what's already been researched. So this has already been researched as well as everything is connected to. So Will of the Panarchy is, uh, has a white connection. This means this has already been researched. However, red line means it hasn't been researched yet. Uh, you have the gray, also the gray text shows you it hasn't been researched yet, but the white text says it has. Uh, then you can also mouse around and you find yellow text here and there. For instance, ancestral recording. Now you remember all these challenges we had. Well, if you look at the top right hand corner of the challenges, you'll see that there's a cure for each of these challenges. You don't have to complete all the challenges, but if you do, there's bonuses to your, um, to your assignment basically by making, you know, those negatives disappear so you can see the negative for brutal brutal justice negative one cultural specialist modifier that will disappear when you cure it which is penal retreats so i can mouse around here and find penal retreats i think i can also click on the yeah i think i can also click on the challenge and it'll take me to it so here's penal retreats and i have to get all the way over to here to be able to alleviate brutal justice from those 24 districts so yeah that's a long way to go um and that's basically the technology screen you can click on something if you want to research it and obviously you have to mouse over to see what it actually does there's way too much for me to go into in this screen but i can say i want to do you know pinarchization policy that's plus one cultural productivity maybe that'll help me counteract the brutal justice um multiplier there i, I don't know really um, so I can click it and I can say I want to adopt it. And now I've researched my first technology. Up at the top we have the next technology cost. It was 5 billion, now it's 10 billion. Total science capacity is 63.2 billion and the unused science capacity is 58.2. So basically I have to increase my science capacity. I can research all the way up to my cap right now instantly uh, and use all this unused science capacity. But um, I have to keep this capacity above the next technology cost or oh, excuse me above the used um, capacity cost so if I have too much science and not enough capacity I end up with uh, ignorance points I think and they start negatively impacting my influence level so I gotta avoid that depth woo um, a lot of depth um, so we'll just leave this screen for now I'm probably not gonna play too much into this you know too deeply into this so I can just if I really want to, I can just go ahead and just to pick a couple of these to to grab. And now next technology cost is too expensive, so I can't actually uh, pick up any of those. I don't think I can pick up that one or that one. Uh, this one or this one. Yeah, they're all 25 billion. They're just identical. So click exit, and we'll go to policy real quick. Your viceregal sovereignty in this territory gives you the authority to operate any form of government you deem appropriate. But you have only been given this absolute authority for one purpose, so that you may save these people and rebuild this territory. Do not forget your duty. Ta-da! Okay. So, oh, we got little statues over here. Just notice that Panarch, Emperor, Viceroy, and President of something president five I, don't, I, don't, I can't read that really well um, so this screen lets you adjust your tax rate lets you adjust your fleet spending and lets you adjust capital transfers which is the uh, percentage of leftover government funds given to districts as capital so it allows the capital uh, the districts to use this money somehow I see I, 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 I don't know um, so if I increase this I'll get more money per turn if I decrease it'll get less and fleet spending is a percentage of the tax rate so if I increase this I can get higher estimated fleet spending. I can also increase the tax rate and it also increase, it increases that because it's a percentage based on a percentage. Percentage exception. Um, and then on the right we see the totals of everything. Then we have different policies we can enact and the policies change. Everything gets applied in the middle of the turn. Like 
Um, so you have to wait till you hit the tur next turn button, and then after that, the next turn, everything's applied. So everything you're doing here is basically just planning what you're going to do in the next turn, even the technologies, I think. So military policy, I can choose junta, vassalage, civil defense, and peacekeeping. So on the left, um, you have uh, the rebels can overthrow you easier. However, you get bonuses to fear over here. You get double fleet capacity over here, half rebel fleet capacity over here, and then you get over here. Um, rebel fleets are even are, are even more troublesome, but they can't overthrow you, so you can basically keep playing. But it'll negatively impact your influence and your planet. So you have to like pick your policy carefully. Um, then religious policy gives you all the way in the left there's state religion, which gives more population growth, but more bureaucratic overhead, which can be dangerous. Over here is relativism, which is less uh, uh, overhead, but also uh, your population growth starts to uh, shrink or, or grows slower, I should say. Cultural policy, there's monoculturalism, which is less uh, bureaucracy and also less science capacity, whereas multiculturalism gives you more science capacity, but more overhead. And finally, economic policy. On the left, all the way here, we got planned economy, which is plus two wealth levels, negative 50% income. All the way on the right, we have plus 25% income and negative one wealth level. So a wealth level is basically, I think there's 10 wealth levels, and the higher you get your people, the happier they are with their wealth level, but uh, it affect, affects your income. So you can basically make your people uh, more wealthy, but then there's less income going through the system, which means there's less income coming to you through taxes. I think that's the way it works. Boy, is it hard to tell. <laughs> um, and then uh, we also have fleet. Since the construction of military vessels is substantially beyond the capacity of any one territory, each region sends contributions to the Commonwealth's overall fleet capacity, which your vice regal administration has been authorized to use. You can allocate this fleet capacity between a number of highly customizable vessel patterns. If these vessels are lost in battle, their fleet capacity cost will be reassigned to you over time. Okay, and so in the fleet capacity, current capacity is 9 million. Available capacity is 9 million, so we don't have anything in the fleet yet. We don't have a fleet. And then the max capacity right now is 904 million if we increase it enough. And if we click on this, we can, this is our fleet one, we can drag ships across. And you see each one of these ships has different stats on it. So we can grab all these if we want to just check it out. Uh, you can click on the different ones and see what they can do. Uh, you can also customize them. So, for instance, this fleet, uh, this um, small ship cruiser here, uh, uses a Beyonder weapon. It shows the range, capacity used, and all that kind of stuff. This is the armor it's using. This is the shield generator. And this one up here, you see this big one has more slots. So you can have have more defenses, one attack, etc. You can change what weapon they use. Um, all that kind of stuff. So I can switch this out if I wanted to with one of these. I can put another shield on it in, in lieu of armor. And you can see what that kind of does. So it looks like sh armor is about 10 times stronger than shields, but uh, shields regenerate, whereas armor does not. Uh, and you also have different ranges. Generally, short range weapons are stronger, but they're shorter range, so they have to get into range, which means they're going to take more damage. Whereas longer range weapon, I think all the way out here, those are, um, you can shoot from longer ranges, but they are weaker. So that's kind of the way it is. You can see, after you put it all together, you see the total cost of that, of that ship. So let's put all these guys back. We can't actually afford a fleet right now, I don't believe. But uh, the bigger our fleet, the more fear there is. Fear increases public support for your government, just as happiness does. So if, they, if your people are not happy, they better be scared. Uh, so let's go ahead and cancel. We don't. Uh, we only have nine million fleet capacity. I think this one is right here is already like 100 million, just to get the tiniest ship. So we don't really have the ability to have a fleet yet, and that that would take a couple turns. Um, oh yeah, let's set a policy real quick. Uh, throw on. Uh, we'll throw on relativism, um, monoculturalism, and feudal economy, and just get some cash rolling in. That'll increase our income, I believe, in the next couple turns. And then we can switch back over later on. I'm not sure if that's a good idea yet, but I read it somewhere on a comment on a forum and said, hey, why not? Um, and then finally we have capital, which I believe takes us back to that original screen 
which we don't even need to be at anymore. Um, if you mouse over this stuff, you can see the different, different things. So like, for instance, Imperial Reformers, it'll tell you a little bit about the misery, the ignorance, and the mor mortality, which is right now, weight of mortality is 100%. And then, just different things up here. This game is so it's so deep, it makes my head hurt, honestly. <laughs> Oof, it's a lot to take in. Uh, finally, up here, we have Influence. Basically, the goal of the game is this is your score. Kind of like in Crusader Kings 2, you have Prestige and, and then uh, Dynasty score. The Influence is kind of like Prestige, and then when you when you get, um, when you you get finish with your assignment or you turn it back in, you can basically bank that Influence, and it's kind of like turning Prestige into score. Um, if you haven't played Crusader Kings 2, then that makes no sense whatsoever. Um, uh, credits, here's the credits that we have, 15.7 uh, billion, by the way, and that increases with each turn. And if you mouse over that, you can actually see all the different modifiers. And, all right, well, uh, oh yeah, one more thing. Can you believe there's one more thing in this game? Um, there's little portals here and there. Greenlings, Union Ears, those were some of the things I've seen, uh, I saw up there. Um, and then this one, Aesthetics. So if I click on this one, which is Union Ears, Tutorial Voice so Your voiceover. best regal administration maintains authority over the Commonwealth humans in your region. Neighboring non-Commonwealth humans and non-human entities form significant political authorities who may assist in your endeavors, or even divulge the secrets of your territory's artifact. So you see what the Union Ears are. So these are like uh, other races, I think. Like, I don't quite understand exactly how this works, but the Union Ears were once human, yada, yada, yada. Basically, these guys like happiness a lot. So completing these tasks will gain one plus one happiness in each district. And so these are the tasks that, these, that this, I guess, race is requesting that you do. So if you look on this, it's either race or, I don't know, government or something. It's, it's something. Um, so, for instance, scientific territory, it tells you what you should do, and currently our science is at 63.2 billion. They want us to increase that to 4.8 trillion, and then if we do this, we get this little boost here, plus one happiness to each district. And we have 50 districts, so that's plus 50 happiness across the whole place, if you think about it. Um, and then financial system and urban system, and each one of those, each one of the portals has different challenges for you. This one's plus one biological infrastructure. Uh, they're the greenlings kind of that's a kind of appropriate um, So I think yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean I, I could go over and I could actually assign everyone For instance, I can assign everyone here to industrial I'm not gonna go uh, Force you guys See, that's why this is this is kind of a hard game to put on YouTube because um, There's a lot of micromanaging involved and so it's it's gonna be it would be difficult for me to keep everything interesting while I'm, you know, going through. I would want to go through each and every district and start messing with it. There's a fountain of Erdl. As Erdl. in the days of the old empire, territories are centered around large pieces of infrastructure, which the commonwealth now calls artifacts. Though their purpose is very widely, an artifact can greatly enhance the operations of your viceregal administration, provided you can convince your neighbors to divulge the secrets of its operation. So if you make all your neighbors happy, the Greenlings, the Aesthetics, and the Unioneers, uh, you get, um, complete all these tasks, you get the increased effectiveness of capital transfers by 10%. Um, so yeah, there, it, there's so much micromanaging in the game, I'm, I'm not going to be able to really make this into a series, but, um, at least we can, oh, we can see little trade ships flying around. At least we can show a turn or two. So if I click turn here, it'll apply, it'll apply everything I've already done, everything I've done for the past... You know 28 minutes of this episode it'll apply everything and then boom next turn you see there's more ships flying around uh, you can see our credits went up I'm not sure if our technology went up doesn't nope nope uh, it looks like unused science capacity is actually in the negative so it, it looks like what we did something we did probably the policies we enacted crushed <laughs> utterly crushed our science capacity if I had to guess let me go into policy real quick uh, to, there it is. Monoculturalism is horrible for science capacity. So I, I probably would have, should have done this first before assigning all that technology. Because this basically forces me 
to push it over to interculturalism again. Otherwise, I start losing influence. Although I have no influence to begin with, so I guess it doesn't matter. In the bottom left-hand corner, you see all these events have occurred. So crowding decreases, higher thinker, object. There's our objective list, and then we got uh, wealth decreases from one to zero, and all the districts of Forbes. Good job, Viceroy. You've made everyone poor. Uh, all right. So, yeah, that's basically the Viceroy. You can you can see it's an amazingly deep game. There's so much to it. And, uh, yeah, check it out if you're interested. There will be links in the description to check out their website and their Steam page. We can click through a couple more turns until we get overthrown. Come on, a little further. Amazing. Okay, you see, you see the Rebel Fleet is popping up here and there. So this game is available on Steam. Check out the links, check out the website, check out the Steam store page. Apparently they're not going to overthrow me. Um, anyway, and I guess there's nothing else left to say, but remember, keep it clean. <laughs>